Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to another video. Hi. My name is Rodgon, in case you guys don't know my name and you stumbled upon my video. And today's video is going to deal with something that I am very, well, very, very passionate about. And it's something that I always tell everybody that asks me how you want to get better. You need to learn a couple things. You need to know about perspective and anatomy. In this case, uh, today's lesson is going to be on anatomy and three different ways in which you can practice or study to get better at anatomy as an artist. Don't worry, you're not going to have to learn every single muscle. You're not going to have to learn every single thing in your body to be able to be good at it. You just need to know how to draw it and where everything fits and where everything lies. So, we're going to go through a couple examples and from oh, that some examples that help me get better. They might not be the best things out there. They might not be, you know, something that works for you, but in my case, it helped a lot. So hopefully, my three methods help you get better at anatomy as well. And just like that, it will help you get better at art. Because anatomy is one of the most important things in getting better or progressing as you're an artist. So first step is drawing from reference or references more likely than not what I mean by that is for example uh, you can take an image online and if you have a computer or if you have some tracing paper uh, though it doesn't have to necessarily be on the computer you can just find any image you want online if you have a computer just make the image a little bit opaque and what I used to do all the time and I used to spend countless hours doing zoom in a little bit especially with I love using bodybuilder poses especially if you're going to be going into superheroes and stuff like that because it already gives you a very defined muscle structure so at this point you would just like keep it loose too it doesn't have to be perfect so you can start seeing just trace the overall you know like shapes of the lines you start seeing very defined shapes pop up and I love these pictures because they have like incredible lighting they're made for like shows and stuff like that so and you can start getting a very rough idea of human anatomy you might not be able to, you know, name all the parts of the body and stuff like that. And there's some very subtle parts of it which, you know, only come with knowledge of an actual, like, body. But that's what the other methods are going to focus on, so don't worry so much about it. So you can just go in, just very loosely, you know, these are just for practice. And you can find images on Google, you can find images on stock websites if you actually like purchasing them. Uh, but since you're not going to be using these for anything other than reference, odds are you don't really need to purchase much like a lot of these. 
I got the <coughs> sorry about that. I got these uh, via Google, and then I saw just the usage rights to make sure that you know it'd be okay to put them in the video. But if you are stuck in trying to find a cool pose to do for you know a comic book or an illustration, there's nothing wrong with using reference. Uh, a lot of people have to have this really weird idea that it's cheating or it's like lame to use reference that everything has to come from your mind but not real no 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 not at all like some of the best you know animators illustrators they all use reference so don't be afraid of the reference guys don't be afraid of the reference as you can see you can start seeing oh there messed up that you can start distinguishing how everything is built where the muscles are supposed to break, where they overlap each other, where there's shadows, where there's highlights and I'm not really putting a lot of effort into it and this, like obviously drawing from reference I'm, at first it's really good because you have to build your mental library and what do I mean by mental library it's like images and knowledge that you have in your head that you build over drawing the like over and over and over uh, nobody nobody I've never met one person that can just straight off the bat you know draw anything they want without like you know having drawn something like that a million times over it, it's just not happening so I mean unless you're a complete like prodigy and like just know everything already but for example if we turn off this now now we have a drawing of a buff dude see it's pretty simple and then from this point on you could just go in without using that anymore just go in you want to give it a t-shirt let's give it a t-shirt want to give it a superhero belt and give him a superhero belt blah, blah, blah. obviously this is being rushed you know <laughs> but it's just to like give you guys an idea of what it would look like maybe he's Superman I don't know there you go Maybe he is a Super Saiyan. He's Vegeta. Know what I mean? Uh, but it's a really simple way, and he's gonna wear tiny, tiny shorts. And sandals. In one sock. But you get an idea of that's one way that you can go about it. Uh, another way that you can actually approach the same method if you don't want to just use the pose as reference and you actually want to know how the construction of the body is. Let's take this lady right here. Now we're going to, you know, go into building the basic shapes of her body. So for example, we have the arm, right? If we want to actually pay attention to how the perspective of her, you know, arm works, you can go in and start deconstructing it. Her hand. This tends to help people because a lot of people don't know especially if you're studying uh, animation and stuff like that it helps to be able to know how things are built in a perspective plan Let's block that in. same thing here like arms legs all those are always super annoying to learn how to like draw properly so 
this is another method that I used to get better at that. Let's see, face. I'll have to make a whole new video on heads. Uh, the way that I break down heads is a little bit different. I mean, it's not incredibly different from what other people do, but it's different enough that it might help some people actually learn how to do it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Rip cage would be right here. And her hips, one, and the one leg is one here, one's here. And this is kind of the way that you'll see a lot of like how to draw books break down anatomy. It's very simple, but I like I think that it's a little bit limiting when it comes down to actually learning more advanced structures. Simply because not everything is circles and cylinders and squares and boxes and stuff. It just isn't. Uh, there's a lot more complexity when it comes down to, for example, like elbow joints. You know, it's not just an L. It's more like you have like this part and you have this part, but then it like the bone from here sticks out more, but then you have like muscle structures that go around it and you have your tricep and then they overlap, blah, 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 blah. So you have to actually learn a little bit of those interactions. If you just stick to learning how to like break down things into shapes, yeah, it'll help with breaking down like a body, you know, to get a general pose. But in order to get more advanced from that, you need to learn how to see the muscle structures a little bit better, a little bit more complex. Heels are always cool. Okay. And you guys let me know if you guys want some more like in-depth body part sections. Uh, I know hands and feet are normally very hard for people. And I wouldn't mind making videos on stuff like that too. So you just let me know. Alright, so you're going to get a general idea. The moment that I turn off this, we have everything broken down into shapes. Hips. Rib cage, upper arm, lower arm, thighs, calves, and feet. You know, so it's another way that you can practice that, see how everything's structured, and then just after doing it a lot of times, you're going to be able to do it properly. Let's see, let's try one more. And try to keep it super loose, guys. Like, and remember, you're trying to just get as much practice as you can. So, for example, like this one has a really cool perspective to it. You know, we're going to go into slightly more like in-depth, like muscle, like you got to see where things overlap. I think that's the biggest point that everybody misses. Like, see where the shadows and the lights hit so you can actually learn to draw the overlapping shapes. learn when to and when not to draw all the lines it's that that takes a while because like sometimes you want to draw everything sometimes you don't depending on what the like whatever the pose calls for if it's more simplicity if it's more you know complex you just have to make a shot call you know most of the time And I know that's not something you want to hear from like a person that's making a video on how to do something. But hopefully after, you know, practicing this type of stuff several times you'll be able to, you know, make the calls yourself. 
and you'll see what I mean. Like it, it normally just clicks after a while. You know, it, it's it's just one of those things that it's it's hard to explain, even though a lot of people will try to like do their best to do it, but it's not always the easiest thing to explain. I'm just gonna kind of fill in the hair. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because we have a couple other methods that we can like to approach. Okay. You should practice on just clothes models. Obviously, that would be good because you know learning how you know f clothes fold and how they like interact with each other is really good. But you should also practice off models. You know, like you can just find life drawing models, uh, poses, and stuff like that online. Uh, there's like straight up websites just dedicated to to having pictures like that. And yes, they would be naked people. Uh, you really have to like get over the fact that people are naked. Like if you're affected <laughs> and you care a lot about that sort of stuff, uh, not seeing like naked people or stuff like that, it's it's kind of hard to study anatomy if you're like that. Uh, it's not impossible, but definitely you're gonna struggle. <laughs> Uh, like moral values should come second to learning when it comes down to nakedness and the human body you like I remember seeing in my first life drawing class in art school uh, the teacher well we most people had not seen naked people before you know it's like 18 year old people uh, and especially a lot of the girls like were really shocked because it was a dude and he straight up just drops the trousers and like a lot of these girls had never like seen a penis or anything like that before <laughs> so they were just like shocked like oh my god what are we watching oh god and it was kind of hilarious and then the fact that the teacher since none of the like girls and a lot of the guys weren't like willing to draw like you know the genital area uh, he made us all just draw penises throughout the whole class <laughs> until we like lost like that aspect of ourselves. It was it was quite funny. Uh, yeah, you can do this with anything though. It's it like this type of practice can be done with anything. If you want to get better at drawing animals, you can draw animals like this. If you want to get better at drawing shoes, boats, cars anything you can just you know do that do this type of stuff and then eventually you'll start seeing how everything's broken down and you'll be able to draw it from memory but at first it's always good to practice with a little bit of reference and let's see all right so if we turn off our thing we have a dude like a little kind of emo dude but we have a dude yeah you can go in later on and like stylize this, but at least you'll know kind of roughly how a pose like this works. And you will start building your mental library on how to build different poses really quickly if you put the time and effort into doing it like this. Okay, so we're going to go into... Okay, cool. We're going to go into the next step. Uh, the next way that you can get better at anatomy is and this is going to be more kind of like a slideshow thing right now because it's better to just you know show you guys visually uh the next step is to take life drawing classes what are life drawing classes well life drawing classes are essentially classes where you go you bring something to draw with most of the time it's charcoal or lead or pretty much anything you want really but they have a model it can be a naked model you know so you, with proper lighting coming in you know so in simple backgrounds too so you can just go in and study the body study human bodies it's 
guys, girls, everybody goes to these classes. You know, if you are an art student, you've probably taken some of these. If you're not an art student, you can always go to your community colleges or, you know, there's normally life drawing classes in any city, you know, that has any sort of art community will have life drawing classes. Uh, they're normally not too expensive, maybe like five to ten bucks a class. If you're very lucky, you can maybe go into a community college and just ask to audit the class. So that means that you can just sit in and use the model as a drawing source instead of and not having to pay for it because you're not looking for a grade. So, you know, some examples of that. Like they also have, you know, clothed figure drawing, you know, and you don't have to have an easel, you don't have to have any of that stuff. Like this lady right here. She just has a you know a sketchbook and her art supplies and then she just draws the model. It's not so much about getting a masterpiece with each of these pieces it's more just general practice so you have a very good muscle memory if you have good muscle memory then you know or mental library and muscle memory whatever you want to call it if you know you draw poses like this all the time you're going to be able to recall on those whenever you are actually in need to draw something from a pose like that so, I would really, really recommend taking some life drawing classes if you're not a self-taught person, if you, you know, don't want to, you know, go out and take the time to find some cool, you know, pictures and do it, or even if you want to compliment it, or do both, like I did. You know, I, just taking classes, and you're surrounded by all these like-minded people that just want to do the same thing, too. So... You know, and you can always ask questions and stuff like that. So surrounding yourself with people that have the same mindset is always a really, really good thing. Never shy away from being in a community that does what you like to do. They will teach you more than probably any teacher will ever teach you. So that is method number two. Nice and simple. Find some life drawing classes. I believe you can even find some online. Uh, I'm not completely certain, but you can always find life drawing poses online. If you just Google that or put it on Pinterest or something like that, it, it'll pop up with a million different, you know, pictures. You can just do method number one with those, or you can just draw it visually so you can get better at drawing without having to trace. So that's method number two. And method number three is going to be reading. <laughs> Yes, guys, reading. And I'm going to give you guys three books that personally helped me a ton in getting better at this because they broke down things properly. The first one is this book right here. And I'm not going to post a, like a bunch of examples because I actually want you guys to go out and buy them. I'll put links in the description so you guys can actually go out and purchase these. These are not very expensive books. They're like 10, 20 bucks max, but they bring so much to the table. So the first one is Figure Drawing, Design and Invention by Michael Hampton. This book is great. It's very, 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 very much geared towards, you know, illustrators and people that like to draw. And the way that they break down things, it's very cool because they start teaching you they go all the way from super basic and this is a little bit more complex than like what they start off with but you know I like this example because it's color coded uh, they have a reason for it being color coded if you have a color coding system to your anatomy you're able to always know for example like right here we have an orange well next to an orange there's a purple or violet, whatever. So you start associating different parts of the body with different colors, which means that you're never going to forget to draw that. You're going to start associating the human body in different ways, and you're going to know that, oh, well, you know, like the blue, like the blue part right here connects to the red part. Ah, uh, I forgot to draw, draw the, you know, red part. And it sounds super silly and simple, but this way of seeing things helps out so much so much it like it took my stuff from like bleh 
to a lot better, a lot better, just being able to associate things like that. Because you can start seeing things into perspective and stuff like that, and it's so much better than just traditional, just, oh, draw a box, oh, draw a cylinder, oh, connect it to the hips. But they don't explain to you how this book does. It goes through every single part of the body, and I really, really recommend it. So the book, again, is Figure Drawing, Design, and Invention by Michael Hampton. And he has a couple. I think he came up with uh, book number two. I haven't picked it up yet, but I highly recommend you check that one out. Book number two. This one's going to be more for the cartoonists ones in you. you know? This book is 100 Tuesday Tips by Grizz and Norm. Okay. This is one of my favorite books I have ever purchased. It's really nice and big. It's maybe like 12 inches tall. So it's not a little book. And it's full of examples like these. So that actually tells you, you know, like different things like, you know, even just shading things or just telling you like simple, super simple ways to like break down perspective, like how two sides of the body work. And these are, I got, that's over, I mean, it's like a hundred pages book, but he has a website as well. So I recommend you guys check it out. I'll leave a link in the description as well. So you guys can check out, like he posts something constantly and they're all really good tips. That one was with bodies. Let's turn off that one. And, you know, they have hands, they have feet, they have, you know, hair, they have everything. Like this is probably one of my favorite books of all time. I'm a cartoonist. You guys know that. And even though I can do life drawing and portraits and stuff like that as well, cartooning is my passion. That's what I love to do. So this book helped me a lot. I've probably copied every page on this book at least three times. So I recommend you guys check it out. It's another book that I really absolutely love. And the last book, it's, it's more so uh, about how to draw faces. And I just really love this book, so I want to actually put it out there for you guys. It's Facial Expressions, a Visual Reference for Artists by Mark Simon. This book is intense. It's huge, it's fat, and it's full of pages like these. They have tons of examples. And this is one of the best reference books you will ever, ever have. Because not only can you use it to like reference different you know stereotypes of people there's another example but you can just see and practice facial expressions for days it's a huge amount it's maybe like I don't even remember how many pages oh I have it right here let me see it's 250 pages of different people doing you know an average of 16 facial expressions. You can't beat that. Like, you will never, ever, 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 ever worry about finding the right expression ever again. You guys wonder why all of my drawings have really fun facial expressions because I've studied books like this all the time. Not only because I was a caricature artist, but because it helped me like, re like see how different expressions work in different angles. It's really, really cool. And I highly highly recommend it. It might not be completely just, you know, structural anatomy and how to get better at that, but, you know, this will help you with the facial aspect of anatomy. You know, you can go in and do the same thing. You can start breaking down different sections. You can get proportions. You can start, you know, like playing around with it. So let's make a really quick example. Let's say we have this one, right? And I want to draw this one right here. So, I would just, if I was just playing around, let's say I want just to draw a character. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to go with? I want to go with this one instead. Say, random character. It's going to be not necessarily the dude that I'm seeing at right now, but I wanted that facial expression. Let's say he's like a devil. Wow. but I want this facial expression. So, start breaking down the face. Wow, it's gonna have the neck. Okay. 
So his eyes are closed. Gonna go big fat eyebrows. Let's make this brush a little bigger. We can start seeing that it scrunches up in the nose. He has little lines underneath the eyes, signify that he's squinting. And then here comes the body shape. Like, And I think it helps a lot to actually show you guys examples of how I use it so you guys can understand the uses of this sort of stuff. It also helps with like knowing how uh, the face contorts to different expressions. You know how there you go. You can see how a book like this can actually help you be better at what you do already. Like that way you take away a lot of the thinking aspect of it. And you guys can just focus on the actual art aspect of it, which is really, really fun. Uh, that way you know you're going to have a really cool facial expression and you're going to have a really cool pose. All you have to do is about worry about stylizing that pose into something that's really cool for you. So, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, those are the three best, easiest ways that you can improve without worrying too much about taking, you know, like, lots of expensive classes. And you guys can do this on your downtime. You can just carry a lot of images like this on your phone and then just draw them whenever you're at, you know, coffee shop, if you carry a sketchbook. Or if you have like a, something like an iPad Pro or something like that, you can just even use your finger and just practice them over and over and over. And it's all about putting the time and the effort into doing these things so you guys can do it better. So with that, guys, I am going to let you guys go. So bye. If you guys enjoy my videos and you guys like what I do, please click like and subscribe. They should be somewhere down there in the comment section or above the comment section. Click the notification actions. I'm going to be uploading a little bit more. I'm going to be doing these uh, tutorial videos every Tuesday. It's going to be a little bit different sometimes, you know. Maybe it'll be how to draw certain parts of the bodies. Maybe it'll be how to do something as an artist like you know lifestyle wise and or maybe it's just some random tips and tricks that I want to give you guys you know how to make money how to like you know sell your artwork better how to like deal with shitty clients stuff like that those are all videos that I want to do in you know sometime soon uh, I'm going to also be doing fan art Fridays which will be me just 
taking suggestions in my Instagram about what to draw and then I'll just make a video on drawing that. Maybe it'll be time lapse, maybe it won't depending on the complexity of the character. And I'll also try to do like a little bit more of like those quick time lapse videos like the panda video in seven minutes that I did not too long ago. But with that, thank you guys so much. I hope it wasn't a very, very long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.